A very good evening to all the viewers on yet another edition of Vyrock YKSpedia. On behalf of the Bombay Orthopedic Society, I welcome you all to Vyrock 2019. The conference will be held from December 20th to 22nd at the Renaissance Convention Center and we are looking forward to welcoming all of you for this conference. Today we have with us Dr. Fayaz Memon, who is an arthroscopic surgeon attached to the JJ Hospital, Safi Hospital and Prince Ali Khan Hospital. And he is going to be speaking to us about treatment of bucket handle meniscal tears. Is it that difficult? I welcome Dr. Fayaz and hand over the proceedings to Dr. Fayaz. Thanks, Swapnil. I welcome all my viewers to Vairak 2019. I am Dr. Fayaz Memon and I'll be speaking on managing bucket handle meniscal tear. Is it that difficult? A bucket handle meniscal tear, as we all know, comprises of 10% of total meniscal tears, medial meniscal being more often found thrice than the lateral one. A bucket handle meniscal tear becomes painful when it flips, thereby giving an MRI picture of a double PCL sign. <clears throat> I present you with a 19 year old male with a history of locked knee post twist injury two days back. His left knee was found to have isolated medial meniscus bucket handle tear without any ligament injuries. I prefer operating this patient in supine position with the leg in leg holder or with the lateral side uh, thigh support. Following are the steps which I prefer. The first being tear reduction. If required, opening of the joint space by means of pie crusting of uh, MCL, opposing the torn edges of uh, the bucket handle meniscal tear. First using an inside out traction suture through the body of the tear. Then repairing the posterior horn, then repairing the anterior horn and the body. Check for the stability of repair and address any malalignment or instability issues. My preference of repair is all inside technique for posterior horn, inside out technique for the body and outside in technique for anterior horn. All inside technique can be used for all types of meniscal tear patterns. When you uh, all inside meniscal tear, you reduce the tear using a blunt instrument like a probe. If required, you can manipulate the joint. Once you have reduced the tear, place an inside out suture to reduce the meniscal tear and keep it reduced while you repair the remaining parts of the torn edges. We pass the uh, needles. This is the uh, of the meniscus. Once you have passed here, you can see the suture which has been placed and the meniscus is reduced and kept in reduction while we will proceed for the repair of posterior and anterior horns of the meniscus. Now, once you are on the posterior horn, take the slider of the all inside cannula, bend it to 20 degrees if required, so that you don't damage any cartilage while passing your all inside device. Slide the all inside device over the slider and remove the slider. So here you can see the slider in place and you pass the all inside device. Now pierce the all inside device in the posterior horn through both the torn edges, pass through the tear up to adequate depth so that you your implant is deployed beyond the 
peripheral edge of the meniscus deploy the implant and come out keep adequate distance between the second pass again repeat the step joystick the tear if required again go to up to the adequate depth and deploy the second implant this is how technically we do it move the all inside device and then you can see one thread coming outside and two threads between the two deployed implants which are going to repair the meniscal tear now pull the thread that is outside so that the torn edges are repaired be careful not not to tighten it too much or keep it too loose just adequate enough to pull the edges once the tightening is confirmed remove or cut the uh, leading edge of the uh, thread once this step is done this is how you reduce and repair the tear once your first pass is done flip the portals so that you get proper trajectory for passage of the second implant again keep adequate distance between the first implant and the second implant with the all inside device here you can see the torn edges of the meniscus this is the uh, medial and that's the peripheral repeat the steps as you can see here the first pass and the second pass once both the implants are deployed you can pull the thread be careful while pulling the thread do not forget to keep the probe in between the meniscus and the thread otherwise it can cut the meniscus like a cheesecake cut the leading edge of the thread and here you can see nicely reduced posterior horn so here the body is in place the posterior horn is in place you can you can use as many implants for reduction of uh, the uh, torn edges thereby repairing them beyond doubt for the anterior horn i prefer outside in repair where there are two needles a suture is passed through one needle and a loop is passed through another needle then this suture is passed through the loop and the loop retrieves the suture thereby getting a loop around the uh, meniscal tear and once you tighten this uh, uh, not outside the peripheral edge of the meniscus the uh, repair uh, uh, of the torn edge takes place so this is how we do it sorry for the bad video in this case so once your two needles are in place as described we pass the loop from one needle and the thread from another needle pass this thread through the loop and if required hold the thread with the grasper and then reduce the tear by pulling the two sutures and you can see how nicely this repair has taken place pass another set of two needles and as many of them required for complete repair and repeat the steps so this is the left knee medial meniscus so you can see the repair again here so this is the second pass for the anterior horn and once this repair is done you can see that the whole meniscus is repaired beyond doubt confirm your repair once you are convinced then tie the knots outside the joint capsule see to it that there is no structure going between the knot and the joint capsule once you are convinced that the repair is fine throughout the range of movement of the joint your surgery is done here you can see how easily and nicely a difficult looking bucket handle tear has been repaired 
in no time. This is the posterior horn, that's the body, and on your left side is the anterior horn. So that's the posterior horn, here is the body, and the anterior horn on the left side. Post-operatively, I do not allow weight bearing for six weeks. Passive range of movement up to 90 degrees is allowed for the first weeks and later on progressed as tolerated. Patellar mobilization, passive range of movement and quadriceps activation is given for first six weeks. Once full weight bearing is started, muscle strengthening exercises are begun with. Deep squatting, cross leg sitting is to be avoided until four months post-operatively and I do not allow return to sports before six months at any cost. So in the literature, we find multiple uh, papers which show that there is 65% increase in the stress after a meniscectomy. So if somebody comes with a bucket handle tear or the meniscal tear, and if you do a meniscectomy, that he has 65% increased stress over and above the normal stresses that a knee undergoes. So majority of the authors recommend meniscal repair over meniscal meniscectomy wherever it is possible. And it has been seen uh, in multiple studies that two thirds of the repaired menis uh, bucket handle meniscal tear heal. Schwarzman et al. in 2017 showed that 87% of peripheral and 59% of central bucket handle meniscal tear healed respectively. The survival rates of meniscal repair has been shown to be about 94% at six months, about 85% at one year, about 78% at two years, and about 70% at three years. So at three years, still we have 70% of uh, meniscal tears which survive. So if you see this return to sports versus the uh, meniscectomy or meniscal repair surgery graph, you find that although in the initial days, uh, uh, return to sport is uh, earlier in case of meniscectomy in view of uh, the survival of the joint. If you see uh, at uh, about a year's time, both of them show the same range, which means that in the long run, a repair of bucket handle meniscal tear is a better option vis-a-vis -vis meniscectomy. And it is as easy as you just saw. I thank you very much for your kind attention. That was indeed a very wonderful presentation made quite simple by you, Fayaz. I thank you very much for this presentation. And uh, I would again like to welcome the viewers of this webinar for Wirok 2019. It's coming up in less than a month's time. Less than a month's time. Uh, all of us are very excited for the conference and uh, we'll see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Swapnil, for this uh, kind of opportunity given to me. Thank you.